views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. The following audio is via a Skype call. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. It is so great to be connecting with all of you. Thank you so much for tuning us in and turning us on. We had a great show today. Great show. Love Seeker Radio with my co-host today, Coach Heather Lynn, Finding Love for Your Authentic Self. Now, here's what I want to say about today's show. You know, many of us have a sense of, some sense, right, wrong, or indifferent, of who we are. And as a matter of fact, we have a sense of, uh, you know, the kind of person we actually want to be with. But our sense of the person that we actually want to be with and the people that actually show up may or may not be the same thing. So today, um, we get to have this conversation about why breaking free of a type can lead to amazing love. Why breaking free of a type? This is really an important show because we get caught up in this idea of I want the love in my life. I don't understand why the same thing keeps happening to me over and over and over and over again. Well, you know, there are people in the world, people like my special co-host today, Heather Lynn Temple, who is someone that has said, you know what? I am absolutely in my purpose and passion in helping people, helping people completely understand how our authentic selves show up and attract the people we want in our love lives. So question that Heather asks is, you know, are you exhausted by your search for love? Raise your hand. Boom. Have you listened to all of the relationship experts, done what they've said, and feel more jaded and more confused about dating than ever before? Boom. And how does this even come to the forefront? I mean, you know, whether you're reading a column about love or relationships or you're talking to a friend about them, do you find yourself in this place where, one, you're either second-guessing what it is you actually desire from another person, or do you find yourself completely giving up? You know, do you find yourself in this place where oh my gosh, if I actually get one more person like you can fill in the blanks right there, I am not going to know what to do. Well, it's really good news because help is on the way. So I wanted to say to everyone out there, if you're listening to the show today, you know, this is about breaking free of a type. What do we have to know about that? You know, why are we so attracted to a certain type? Now, just so many of you may not know, You know, Heather Lynn is somebody that brings a completely fresh and innovative perspective to relationship coaching. And, you know, she's a professional and a professional love and life coach. And it's not just about looking at, you know, what it is that's keeping us stuck, but getting at the heart of it, you know, absolutely getting into identifying what's going on in dissatisfying relationship patterns. You know, and sometimes we can look outside of our love relationships and look directly into rela- other relationships, friendships, family. This fabulous show, this show that Heather's been doing, has been all about sharing these insights. But when you move beyond that, the question is going to be, are you really ready to create a different experience in relationship in your life? If you're anything like me, you try to do it by yourself 
And what happens is you don't even see what is right in front of you. But friends, family, other people, I don't know if they're giving us the right advice or giving us the advice. But, you know, working with somebody that completely gets this process and all you need to do is go to uh, just go check out her website. If you go to Heather Lynn, L-Y-N-N coaching.com and you read her own love story, you're going to be able to see why she is showing up here to help the rest of us. Um, During the show today, we're going to tell you a lot about a Leap Into Love program that she is offering to kick off the new year. And most importantly, are you ready to receive the love? Heather, it's great to have you here. Yay. Thank you, Pat. I'm excited to be here, as always. As well, always, it's such a good topic for it is. a meaty topic for me in my own life. So I'm excited oh. to talk about it with everybody else. Why is it so meaty for you? Because I know that you and I do what we do and we and we create some of the things because we have a little experience with this, right? Mm, but tell absolutely. me why this is I love that this is meaty for you. It's definitely meaty for me. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, so if I look back at my relationships and the people that I was attracted to and the, the type of person that I was attracting, you know, there are a lot of common threads in, in the, those people. And, um, you know, I, I often fell for the guy who's the life of the party and for the guy who's a little bit of a brooder, you know, the little bit of a bad boy I'm a little bit of a former bad boy (laughs) Um, and I'm not talking about the kind of of guy who rides a motorcycle and you know smokes cigarettes and that kind of guy but just Mm -hmm. just the guy who's a little bit edgy Mm. Um, and when I really thought about why I was attracted to these guys who actually in hindsight really couldn't give me what I was really looking for you know Mm -hmm. they they their their availability for intimacy was only so deep and uh, when I thought about why they couldn't do that and why I was attracted to them it actually helped me have this awakening experience of of my contribution to that and and why that type of guy was so safe for me and even though it was frustrating and they weren't giving me what I wanted and I felt like um, you know trying so hard to make it work Mm -hmm. Uh, Really, in hindsight, that was exactly what my unconscious mind wanted, was that struggle and the type of relationship that wasn't so deep. Um, And so, you know, a lot of people say, well, I just don't feel chemistry with a certain type of guy. I only feel chemistry with this type of person. And you know what? They're right. Um, But I'm here to argue that we can shift that. You know, when I think about the as I've done this work for myself, you know, I became a coach because of my own experience. Like you said, you know, I've lived this. And now when I think about the kind of guy that I'm I'm with and the kind of men that I've attracted since starting this work, it's so different. And I, I, I do have incredible chemistry with just these really present and kind men. And I never thought that I would, would get to this place. Wow. You know, this is really the question for a lot of folks that are thinking about this. And you said it. You said you never thought you would get to this place. And many, many, many people, especially if you've gone through relationships, ended up in divorce, whatever that is, hearts that have been broken, they never think, you know, we don't ever think we're going to get to that place. And we kind of stay stuck and really fester in some of the woes and the resentments of that. You know, what was the thing that clicked for you? What was the thing that you can think about that maybe, you know, that you had this aha moment, so to speak? Sure. You know, um, even though I, I, I dated a lot of different, different men and um, their sort of bad boy, unavailable looked different in each case and I was uh with a with a man who seemingly he was ready for more than any other guy that I'd ever been in relationship with and and yet again I found myself in the same situation when things were ending that it was kind of that same resistance he was holding me at arm's length the whole time and I, I hadn't stopped to think about that or, or feel that 
Um, and so after things ended between us, it really was this kind of on my knees moment of shoot, <laughs> you know, this this is there's something here. Even though the guy's different and the story's different and the way it plays out is different, the core issues that I felt with each one of them was exactly the same. And so, you know, even though it was painful at the moment, it really was such a moment of uh, clarity for me that mm -hmm. there was something for me to see about myself. You know, I was a common denominator in my experiences and, and the way that I had been playing the game was no longer working. Uh, and so it really was this moment of, huh, let me see if I try something totally different. Let's see what happened. And so of course, I reached out to start my own process and, and here I am and, and my experience is so different from what it used to be and, and like I said, I have incredible chemistry with, with men who are so different from the men that I used to date. Well, and that begs the question of type. You know, when we refer to type, uh, it, it's kind of interesting. Many people can hear the word type. I know I did when I was looking at this for today and I thought about, wow, what is the type? You know, what does that even mean? How, how you, you know, when, when you think about the type, you described yourself, you know, I look for people that are a little edgy and so forth and so on. Um, how do you help people? I'd love to talk with you about this when we come back. How do you help people recognize that they're in a type zone? That, that you got this like type going on, here it is. How do you help them do that? And what are some of the types? Let's take a short break, everyone. We will be right back. Heather Lynn, heatherlynncoaching.com. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Preceding audio was via a Skype call. Hello, my name is Dr. Friedman Schaub. Negative self-talk plays a major role in how we create fear and anxiety. You're probably familiar with that worried, insecure, or critical voice that rises from somewhere deep inside, often at the most inopportune moments. You don't seem to choose the limiting, anxiety-triggering, or self-sabotaging thoughts, nor do you seem to be in control of them. Over the years, I've found that rather than ignoring or suppressing these negative thoughts, what works best is to redirect the mind with at least three counterbalancing arguments that shed light on the opposite, positive points of view. For example, if your negative thought was something bad will happen, counterbalances could be right now I'm okay. There have been many times I was worried and everything turned out well. I have the strengths and abilities to handle anything that comes my way. Positive counterbalancing is training your mind to search for and find uplifting and empowering perspectives for any given situation. Let the transition begin. Tune in to the hit show, Majestic Insights Radio, Success for Life's Transitions, with host Carrie Keith. Carrie is a gifted intuitive coach, healer, and teacher who will lead you through her empowering techniques of ancient wisdom and awareness so you can live your happiest, healthiest, and most vibrant life. Let Carrie teach you the tools of transformation that will help you experience success for all of life's transitions. To learn more about Carrie, visit www.majesticinsights.com. Are you ready to thread your life with intuition? Intuit Apparel can help you do just that. This is not just about a piece of clothing. This is about a movement, an awakening, and staying centered in life. Your life. Intuitive and host of the radio show, Get Into It, Lynn Brown, was given this image with the intention of a clothing line designed to represent the essence of life itself. Visit IntuitApparel.com now and wear your intuition with pride. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. 
Are you seeking a more deeply connected and fulfilling life? Do you often find yourself feeling overwhelmed, overworked, or exhausted? Are you ready to embrace a life filled with more love, connection, and joy? Best of the month list and five star rated on Amazon, Conscious Being by author TJ Woodward will awaken you to your true nature. To learn more about how to get your copy of Conscious Being, visit ConsciousBeingBook.com today. The following audio is via a Skype call. everybody welcome back it's great to have all of you tuning us in turning us on you know why breaking free from a type can lead to amazing love I'm uh, you know you're thinking right now well wait a minute I don't even understand that I just keep I'm still in the type you know I keep getting this type this type I think they're actually different types but I wonder if they really are and here they are they're showing up again so how do we go from why breaking free from a type so we're going to talk about the type first and then later on the show, we're going to talk about amazing love. For those of you out there, you're thinking, I don't know about this. I got questions. This is your time to call in. 1-800-930-2819. 1-800-930-2819. Or you can go to TransformationTalkRadio.com and ask your question, and we'll get your question on the air. But we're talking about types. So the part of the conversation is, why does our type, what does our type suggest about us? I know you and I were talking during the break. What does it suggest about us? And, and I would imagine that asking this question, we have to be really cautious about not labeling ourselves and not beating ourselves up. Is that right, Heather? Oh, yeah. So I think that's the number one thing that I work with, with my own self and with my clients is having compassion. Mm -hmm. And sort of this neutrality, like when we're looking at something about ourselves, to just just look at it as an observer and say, oh, that's interesting. I see that this is the pattern for me, or I see that that this is a fear that I have, or I see that this is a tendency that Mm -hmm. I have. And and not to judge ourselves, but just by seeing it, we can be free to a certain degree of, of that pattern or of that tendency. So that self compassion is so important. Mm hmm. So, Um, you know, the type conversation, if you could talk a little bit about, okay, when we say type, um, can you give us a couple of examples? Sure, of course. So, like I said, there's that bad boy type. Um, And, and of course, when I say type, I'm not talking about qualities that you put on a list. You know, I want him to have dark hair and I want him to be this tall or uh, have this kind of job. What I'm talking about is kind of the core of who that person is. Um, and so we have the, the bad boy, we have the, the safe guy, uh, the one who's really kind of uh, really soft, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I've also seen people be really attracted to the kind of guy who's the life of the party, and that's a little bit different from the bad boy. Um, we have people who are attracted to the kind of guy who um, is very, like the funny guy, the playful guy. Uh, And we can have these in ourselves too. You know, we have a type. We might be a diva or we might be um, kind of the mother, mothering figure or the nurturer. Uh, So these are just kind of typical archetypes that we see in relationship and in people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, part of this is really say, ask, answering that question. I mean, you know, how does that have anything to do with me? I mean, what is it about me that is attracting this type? And do I have to understand me first uh, mm-hmm. uh, in this world that we live in? Or is it more important, Heather, to try to stop the behavior, right? It's like, okay, here I go again. Um, and just say, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got to take, I got to pause here. I got to pause for a minute. <laughs> I got to hit the pause button for a second. Yeah, so I think um, our goal isn't to necessarily change the behavior. Our goal is really just to see that it exists. And, and I yeah. think, like I said a little bit earlier, just seeing it. You know, I didn't, I didn't consciously choose a different kind of guy. 
Mm-hmm. Um, what I did was I just saw my tendency and I saw what it was saying about me. And I got really honest with myself and honest with the, the ugly, quote unquote, uglier or darker parts of myself that I just hadn't been able to face before. And I accepted them. Okay, I see that there's a part of me that's really terrified of intimacy and vulnerability. Okay, I see there's a part of me that's very controlling mm-hmm. and doesn't like chaos. Um, and, and the irony is, you know, when I work with my clients, what we do is we try to figure out what, what persona are you dating from? You know, like what type are you? Uh-huh. And oftentimes the stronger our persona is, the stronger the truth about who we really are is, is equally true. So let's say, um, you know, I, if someone has a persona of a diva, mm-hmm. oftentimes that means that inside there's a part of her that's very soft and very vulnerable that isn't being expressed to the extent that that she's desiring, that her unconscious mind is desiring. So mm-hmm. what we do is we'll project onto the other person. So, for example, mm-hmm. um, you know, if someone loves the life of the party kind of guy, it might be because there's a part of that woman who wants to be sort of in the spotlight or have that glory. And so what she can start to do is, is practice that, that self-expression of, of um, you know, taking risks and telling a little bit more jokes and, and, and getting seen and being noticed, maybe even something simple like wearing a bright color to a party instead of wearing black, you know? Right. Um, and what happens is as she practices that, it'll bring her back into balance and um, she's not projecting the glory outside of herself as much as she was before. So it can change the chemistry and the attraction she has to the kind of man that she she's usually attracted to. So our type really can tell us about what we're safe with, um, what's comfortable for us, even if it's uncomfortable. There's a part of us in our unconscious mind that that will find that very comfortable and familiar and predictable. Um, yeah, so if we if we learn to work with that, we can we can see so much about ourselves. And as we go internally and we explore ourselves, then our external type can shift and the chemistry can shift. Well, and you know, part of this is really getting a sense of, you know, for us, you know, that we're even in it. I know that this is something that for many people, it's kind of like, well, wait a minute. You know, there's so much that I think I know about myself, but I don't know about myself. And, you know, let's talk about that chemistry thing for a minute. You know, how many times have you heard, oh, my gosh, I walked into the room and it was that's it. You know, or I saw that person from afar. I don't even know what they look like, but I knew that this was my soulmate. Um, And so can you talk a little bit about chemistry in terms of, you know, what is that thing that goes on for us and why isn't it always right? I mean, if we talk so much about intuition and we talk so much about the vibe, you know, what is it that's happening? And what about this notion, Heather, that, wait a minute, if I don't get the type that I'm used to getting, uh, then maybe I'm not going to feel the chemistry. I'm not going to get that vibe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it, it goes back to the phrase that I like to use, which is that power of perception or the law of perception, so rather than the law of attraction. And I know I've spoken about this before and on our other shows, but yep. when we walk into a room, you know, our unconscious mind is wired to see patterns. And what happens is we walk in with these preconceived unconscious ideas and we look around the room and we're always projecting meaning onto very neutral events. You know, Mm -hmm. you walk into a room, you don't know the people in that room. There's no way that you know that person that you say is my, oh, the soulmate was love at first sight. You know, if you've never talked to the person, obviously it's all projection, right? right? You're projecting all this glory onto this, this other person that you just don't know and I think that's that happens often and then the relationships sometimes crumble you know sometimes they work out of course right but a lot of times the beginning of relationships we're projecting all of our own glory onto the other person we're making all kinds of assumptions about who they are what kind of person they are and a lot of times 
it's either the parts of us that we wish we had more of or the parts of us that we really love about ourselves and we're seeing mm-hmm. it in the other person. And then you'll see in relationships sometimes once the guards start to crumble and once once we get to know each other a little bit better, those projections fall a little bit because now we're seeing the truth. So we have chemistry with people that we can sort of project our own glory on or people that that meet uh, the expectations of our unconscious mind, which it's, which its goal is always to keep us safe. So that chemistry comes from that that uh, understanding that that other person will keep us safe. Wow. Well, I mean, we've got a lot to talk about here. When we come back, a couple of things are going to happen when we come back. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about leap into love. What is that? And then for, for one of you out there, one of you folks that will call into the show, we have a free 30-minute session with Heather that's going to be given away. Uh, we're going to take a short break. And as I said before, go ahead and check out uh, what Heather is doing, what our coaching program is about. And go to heatherlyncoaching.com. That's heatherlyncoaching.com. Check it out. When we come back, we're going to tell you about Leap, leap Into Love. And for one of you, uh, get ready, 1-800-930-2819. Hey, everybody, we're going to take a short break. If you want to find out more about us, go to the drpatshow.com or go to transformationtalkradio.com. Okay, everybody, we will be right back and get ready to leap into love. Preceding audio was via a Skype call. Artie Hoffman is the hottest psychic with the warmest heart and the host of the hit show Angels and Answers. A renowned psychic, medium, spiritual life coach, and an entertaining motivational speaker, Artie has helped over 15,000 people with his amazing intuitive gifts, his passion, and his humor. Call 877-ANGEL-02 to schedule a personal reading or to have your own psychic Artie party. That's 877-ANGEL-02. And visit ArtieHoffman.com and Angels and Answers on Facebook. Has asthma or allergies got you singing the raspy blues? Allergy and Asthma Networks is the nation's premier nonprofit patient-centered network of doctors, caregivers, patients, and healthcare professionals who are dedicated to ending death and suffering due to asthma, allergies, and related conditions. Join President and CEO Tanya Winders each month on the Dr. Pat Show to learn more and visit AllergyAsthmaNetwork.org today. Breathe better together with Allergy and Asthma Network. Do you want the freedom to spend more time with your loved ones? Travel the world? Live spontaneously? Get ready, because the Chip Justice Show is here. Hosts Dr. Pat Basile and Chip Justice can help you build meaningful success while embracing life. Living a life you love is the end game in this new, inspirational, and empowering show. Positive changes for a life you'll love. Tune in every month on TransformationTalkRadio.com and visit PositiveChangeInstitute.co for more information. Hi, I'm Tim Darter. And I'm Steve Kramer. Join us on Spirit Fire Radio. Discover how to add the mechanics of meditation to your day. And watch yourself connect in a whole new way. Find the amazing moments in life's routines that often pass us by. Add to your awareness with Spirit Fire Radio. Tune in each Wednesday at 9 a.m. for your weekly guide to practical mindfulness. And to learn more, visit www.spiritfireradio.com. Called the Oprah of Radio by her listeners. Award winning host Dr. Pat Basili is blowing the doors off of traditional talk radio. Get ready for an energizing delivery and powerful interviews with leaders in the field of human potential. Dr. Pat's fresh new perspective on living life full out has catapulted her show to the top of talk radio. Tune in and Dr. Pat will help you thrive instead of merely survive. Visit the drpatshow.com. That's T H E D R Pat Show.com for listening times in your area. The following audio is via a Skype call. When you rolled up in the escalade, saw the W game to the valet, knew that it was game. When you looked at me, pulling up your sleeve so I could see the rolly blade. Hey, everybody. Wow. Welcome back. 
And boy, I'll tell you, and Sarah, I'm going to get your question up here in a minute for those of you out there. Uh, yeah, we're taking your questions, comments, and, you know, great question about today. Uh, but before we do, uh, Heather is joining me here today. For those of you out there, go to heatherlindcoaching.com. One of the things that we were talking about before is Leap Into Love. I'm very excited that we get to announce this, right? So tell everybody, if you could, um, you know, uh, what is Leap Into Love? And tell folks, first of all, what this is about for them. I love the title of this. And folks are going to be able to participate this, participate in this from all over the world. Tell us about it. It's exciting. Yeah, I'm so excited about it. So I always feel like January, of course, is a great time to dedicate ourselves to something that we want. And a lot of times if we, we make these resolutions or, or we move forward, but then we lose steam. And I think the average person, you know, probably dedicates it and commits for about two weeks and then things kind of fall in the back burner and we get back into our old patterns. And, and one of the things that I love to do with my clients is show them how to resist falling back into old patterns. And mm -hmm. so um, I, what I thought would be great was to support people for the first three months of 2016 so that they, they make this, this commitment to find love and they get directed support from me for, for three full months. So it's a great program. We're going to do two calls per month, um, and there will be teaching calls but with portions of live coaching right on there. Yeah, and what's so awesome about group coaching, and I love it so much, is that we get so much from listening to other people being coached. And just by being present on a call with other people who are being coached, we transform ourselves. And so, you know, it's awesome for those people who are really kind of shy and maybe have a hard time talking about what they need. Even even they can show up on these group calls and and experience transformation. So what we'll do in, in this program is we'll look at things like what we're talking about today. What does your type, what does your past relationship history, what does it suggest about you? And how can we empower you to live fully authentically and find love at the same time? You know, how can we drop the guard? How can we drop the game? How can we get you to really see all of your beautiful glory so that you can go out and, and find the love that you want and that you deserve. And it's a really empowering and, and freeing experience. So we're going to start in January and we'll continue through March. Uh, and it'll just be an awesome time to, to work together as a group to find love. I love it. And, you know, for many people, this is, you know, the time where folks are really looking at things. I, I heard a very disturbing, a very disturbing uh, statistic that came out recently about how, you know, relationship and staying in relationships are inversely related to how well the economy does. Now, I don't always pay close attention to that, but some of the information kind of makes sense. Now, this is a question that I think is is really fascinating when we think about the wide range of ways that we can experience love or not. And we have great listeners, Heather. Sarah has sent us a message, um, and I think it's a fabulous, fabulous question. Hi, Heather Lynn. Hi, he Hi, Heather Lynn. I'm feeling like my partner's depression and mental health problems are starting to affect my mental health and life negatively and holding me back. How can I tell if it's time to move on or if I should stay with them and support them? I love them very much and have a strong friendship foundation with them I never have before in relationship. And I would have a very hard time leaving them behind. How do I draw the line between loving them and and I don't know if I've got any more to that. And doing, and Sarah, I hope I got the rest of the message in there. It's a great question. And it's actually yeah, it one that I know a lot of people will resonate with that question. Um, and, you know, the, the beauty of the way that I coach is that every person in our lives can serve as a great teacher for us. 
And so what we want to do is we want to use this experience as a way to understand you better, Sarah, to, to see what it's showing you about yourself. Um, and I never, I never advise my, my clients to stay with someone or to leave someone. That's really not my job. What my job is is to help them better understand themselves. Um, and then they, they are free to make their decision from there. So when we're working with someone who, or we're in partnership with someone who has depression or, or mental illness, um, you know, what I would do is I would sit and, and get really quiet. You know, I'm a candle lighter. I like to light some candles. And if I know that I need to do some sort of soul searching and internal searching, and I'll just make sure that's really quiet around me. And I will ask myself, you know, ask that part of you that knows knows more than, than we give it credit. Uh, what is this showing me about myself? And why why am I partnered with this person? And and what is what is it revealing about me? Um, and how can this partner of mine who's struggling be my great teacher? You know, what is this person showing you about yourself? Um, and I think it's just a beautiful time for you, you know, anytime we're triggered, you know, if we're in this moment of tension, it's it's such a blessing because if we stop and we do this work of self-exploration, it's going to lead to a, a beautiful opening for you uh, and a different different experience and, and a different knowledge. So that's what I would recommend is, is to see this person as your teacher and, and actually take advantage of, of that opportunity to see yourself more clearly you know when when we're looking at this i mean this is a tough question and maybe you can address this is it harder and and maybe you know i guess the question that i that i want to ask really has to do with today's topic about the type um have you found it harder uh in the people you work with have you found it harder for people to leave those types that are not necessarily great for them. You know what I'm trying to say? It's like the people that we should be literally running from, it seems the hardest to run from. And I'm not saying, Sarah, that's that's what we're talking about for you. But what is it about certain types that seem to provide this hook? Yeah, well, it's, it's serving a purpose for us. And mm-hmm. as I said earlier, uh, our unconscious mind, its number one goal is to keep us safe and and by safe I mean alive (laughs) and you know if we're still alive our unconscious mind goes well see I've kept you alive and and even if our in our conscious mind we're not happy or not comfortable or not we don't think we're safe there is some part of us that that is fed through this type of relationship Uh, and it's it's a it's a way for us to see, you know, gosh, I, I do stick around really for a really long time with this kind of person. And it's not serving me anymore on a conscious level, but it is serving me somehow on an unconscious level. And I, and I want to see what that is. You know, why is this the type of relationship or the type of person that I'm, I am constantly in connection with, even though, I'm not satisfied with it. You, you know, one of the things that we talked about is, you know, what you're creating and the idea of creating something, uh, you know, for people to learn about, Leap Into Love, for example. You know, we're talking about that group coaching program, that amazing program, Leap Into Love, and, you know, how it's going to help us understand not just about types, but how do we branch out? How do we try something new on you know it's kind of like you you ever this ever happened to you you know all of a sudden you know you're going out and you're shopping and you're buying the same clothes you know the same style you're buying the same colors you know you're doing a b c d and all of the above right and it's kind of the way you look it's your vibe it's the way you feel and somebody says to you well you know my gosh you know you've got a new color on you got that red color on and boy, you look really good in that. And your comment is, yeah, I do, but I had nothing else to wear. It just feels really uncomfortable. So the question really, you know, that 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 comes up for me is how do we get to branch out? How do we get to branch out? 
And what are some of the unconscious love beliefs that we have? We have a ton of them, especially if we're looking at, wow, like how old am I right now? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think you hit the nail on the head a little bit there with when you're talking about, I love just the analogy of the, trying the new clothes on. And, and one of the ways that we can start to try on a new type of person is when we go on dates, really look for the good in every person that we're on a date with. Uh, and notice also what the charge is. You know, so if you go on a date with someone who is, let's say your, your type is usually that kind of boisterous, like mine was, you know, boisterous, sort of like the party kind of person, but this person that you're on a date with is really soft and gentle and sort of soft-spirited. And uh, look at them and see the good. Like, oh, that's kind of a beautiful quality. He's actually asking me a lot of questions, and he's making it about me, whereas the other guys that I was out with, they entertained me the whole time, but they didn't really stop to get to know me. So it's really about looking for the good in, in everyone who comes around. And, and to be open to falling in love with a different kind of person, you know, mm-hmm. possible. Uh, and I think when we are able to take that block down of, oh, he or she is not this or they don't fit this mold, uh, and we start to see the good in them, then what comes out in us is actually the good in us, and they can see that, and that connection can form with someone who maybe we wouldn't on the surface have thought that we would have had connection with or chemistry with. And yeah. when we're charged and when we're triggered, even in, in our relationships with these new types of, per- of people, it, again, like I said with a call with Sarah or the question with Sarah, it's always an opportunity for us to understand ourselves better. So really what we do is we use our love relationships to know ourselves. That's, mm-hmm. that's the goal. Well, you know, it's really exciting. I mean, who doesn't want love, right? I mean, who doesn't really want to jump into the, you know, the idea of love and to be appreciated. We're going to take a short break, Heather. When we come back, we're going to be talking about, you know, some of some of these other unconscious beliefs we have, uh, love beliefs about us. You know, why is it that we, we scratch our heads and can't figure out how we keep repeating things? But most importantly, are you ready? Are you ready to experience the love of your life? What does that look like? Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Preceding audio was via a Skype call. Sky Siegel co-hosts one of today's most popular psychic shows, Angels and Answers, with Artie Hoffman as she communicates healing messages from the spirit world. These messages can be astounding, enlightening, and life-changing. Born with the God-given talent of inner guidance and the amazing ability to heal, Sky has healed thousands of people. Schedule a reading with Sky now. Call 908-500-1474 and visit skyofangels.com. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. A word of caution, if you prefer the status quo and you are not interested in improving every aspect of your life, this book will trigger the shift out of you. The Truth is Funny, Shift Happens is available now. Author Colette Steffen brings the powerful knowledge and life-changing energy and empowerment from the radio airwaves to the pages of her new book. 
To get your copy in paperback or ebook, visit thetruthisfunny.com today. Do you want the freedom to spend more time with your loved ones? Travel the world? Live spontaneously? Get ready because the Chip Justice Show is here. Hosts Dr. Pat Vasily and Chip Justice can help you build meaningful success while embracing life. Living a life you love is the end game in this new, inspirational, and empowering show. Positive changes for a life you'll love. Tune in every month on TransformationTalkRadio.com and visit PositiveChangeInstitute.co for more information. The following audio is via a Skype call. Well, everybody, welcome back. Great to have you here. And as I said before, you can go to heatherlandcoaching.com. Sarah, I I hope that we answered your question. If not, would you just please uh, instant message us back again and let us know? And by the way, if Sarah, if you are interested in uh, spending a little time with Heatherland, it would be great if you sent me your contact information and we'd love to give you a 30-minute session with her. So go ahead and instant message all of that to me. Thank you. Um, Heather, you know, here we are, right? And we're talking about love. And, and really, who doesn't want love? Now, there are some people that don't, or at least they say they don't. And it gets really confusing because of the beliefs we have, right? Right. You know, it's like, okay, you know what, Heather, I'm not really going to put it out there that I really want a relationship because guess what? I'm too busy. I'm too tired. I'm too old. I'm too young. I'm too, too, and all of the above. Now, you talk to people all over the world. I cannot wait to hear what some of the beliefs are (laughs) that you have had show up. Go ahead. Go for it. Yeah, well, I think the number one paralyzing belief that I think that I hear is that real love, if it's true love, then it's going to be easy. And if it's not easy, then it's not meant to be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I think if we have that that belief or that love is going to save us from something, you know, this, this feeling or this person is going to save us from something. Uh, and I think if we just, you know, one way that, that that trips us up is if we think that love is going to be easy all the time, then the first time something happens, if we have a hiccup, then we freak out and we leave the relationship and we think, okay, that's not it. That's not it. He's not the right person or she's not the right person. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, I think that can really hurt us. I think another uh, belief that I see about love is that a lot of people are just carrying around that core belief that they are unworthy of it and even if on the outside they're presenting this really put together person you and I have been talking about that too on the inside a lot of times there's so much fear of unworthiness and so uh, that can affect our love lives in a couple ways you know we can pick people that will well we are so dependent on them proving our worth Mm-hmm. Uh, to our to us, but then when when they leave us, it's like this desperation of oh my gosh, I have to find myself again, and and um, you know it can be really messy. Um, and then some people I know for myself, I had a love belief that that men uh, left, you know they they couldn't be trusted, mm-hmm. um, and people have that too. And and like you, we've talked about too is. I'm I'm too old for love, or love is for other people. Love is not for me. Uh, and so all of these, really what happens is we're going to prove ourselves right. So if we have this unconscious belief that, that we're not worthy or that, um, you know, that, that men will leave or that uh, it's not a very safe place to be in love, then we're going to prove that right because we're going to keep looking for any proof any any little inkling in the relationship that that points to that belief Mm -hmm. will grab onto that and the same thing you know if we think that true love is always filled with happiness then we'll do the same thing on the the flip side you know if we think the first time we see that hiccup we're going to leave and 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 it is work it's not there's no magic here 
<laughs> but the, the freedom is in being able to use relationships and those triggers in relationships, the times where we are frustrated and we are scared, and even the times when we're really, really happy as ways to understand ourselves better and see what it's pointing to in ourselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's really a, and it's really interesting that we are talking about this because this is what I love about the work that you do. One of the things that, you know, so often we forget is that we we can learn a lot about ourselves by ourselves sometimes, you know, certain aspects of life. For example, we can figure out, do I like scrambled eggs? Do I like, you know medium you know over easy what do I like that or not sometimes we can actually figure those things out my favorite color is it really blue is it really green but when we're talking about the innermost depth of our being don't you think Heather that some of the most accelerated ways to learn that is when we're in relationship with other people Oh, yeah. I I just was talking to a friend about that. You know, I am really confident and comfortable with myself when I'm single. <laughs> and I think, oh, I've got this. Next time I'm in a relationship, I got this. I'm, I, I know that it's going to be really easy. I know that my triggers are gone. <laughs> and then, bam, as soon as I'm in another relationship, here they come. You know, it's different versions of triggers. Uh, but And some of them are the same. Some of them hold on. And, again, the goal isn't to get rid of them because they are part of who we are. The goal is to see them and, and, and have some compassion and free up that energy that we have around them. So it, it is through relationship that we, a lot of our, our unconscious beliefs and fears and, and um, the things we hold on to are really triggered in relationship. And... The beauty of it is that those people then serve as a mirror for ourselves to see the deeper parts of us. You know, like you said, it is hard to do self-exploration to on a really, really deep level when we're by ourselves. And the same thing about you know working with a coach is that when we do a lot of self-exploration on our own, yeah, we can answer some questions in a journal or. Uh, you know, maybe listen to some meditations. But when we have someone who's with us asking us these very purposeful and directed questions, right. they can really help us understand our, ourselves on such a deep level. You know, I still work with coaches because I found that it's the fastest way for me to see and understand these parts of myself so that I can have that accelerated change, which is part of that. The reason why I titled my program Leap into Love, because it really is an acceleration as yeah. a process. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know about you, but this is what I love about this. You know, there are really some things that we can do alone. But if we want to excel at something, I don't really know a professional athlete on the planet that hasn't worked with a coach. I don't know. Maybe there are some, but I don't know any. And I don't think that those people are, are the norm. If we literally want to excel, if we want to reach our goals, if we want, you know, our dreams to come true, working with another person to help us see the things we cannot see for ourselves, it's really magical. And when we're talking about love, there are a whole lot of things that we can't see that are really buried deep inside of us. Thank you so much for today. Um, Heather, one last question. What's your personal message? What would you like to leave us with today? You can, everybody out there, can just be yourself, know yourself, understand yourself, really dive into your authenticity, and that is your only responsibility in love, is to show up as yourself and be willing and open to receiving love and loving the other person for whoever he or she is as well. And loving yourself first is always the first step to that experience. Uh, It is amazing. And thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you. I want to thank everybody for tuning us in and turning us on. As I said before, check it out. Go to heatherlincoaching.com. You're going to hear about Leap Into Love, a lot more about it. Get ready to start that new year so you be smiling on Valentine's Day. Let's, uh, 
Let's take a short break later on. For those of you out there, I am going to be talking about the effectiveness of natural medicine in treating chronic symptoms of Lyme disease at one o'clock today on Transformation Talk Radio. We'll see you then. I said I tried to swim against- 